Hello rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's rocket shop where we continue working on the world's only crewed crowdfunded space rocket Spica. Today is January 9th and it's time for some rocket updates. So with Spica's propellant tanks being rolled and soon welded we need to get moving with the rest of the tank structure. And by deburring the drilled holes we're at a finished processing 12 flange sections that will go onto the side skirts of the propellant tanks and will connect them to the other sections of the rocket. Once she was finished with the first three we started assembling them into rings on our welding jigs so this guy could start welding the pieces together. By the end of the day we had two complete flange rings for one of the propellant tanks. Apart from that, we had two more welding projects taking place at the same time, first one being Jorgen trying to weld the first triangular support ribs between the intertank section side skirt and the connecting flank. I'll just press this copper piece up against the... up against it here. With the... with an old glove. And then I should try to... tack this into position with two tacks. Okay. You see here, we have the um, cox or some of this. This is not so good. And we don't want that on the outside. So, uh, and I, I'm trying to prevent it with this, uh, this piece of copper from the, uh, so that's the idea. Over at the other side of the rocket shop, we had more tests of our long seam welder taking place. After a few shorter runs, we went for a pretty long piece of around 1 meter, which did not turn out too bad. We should be soon sending a few of these weld samples to a pull test laboratory to actually see if they are any good for Spica's propellant tanks. And if they are, then we also have a few bulkheads nearly ready to go. Continuing from the previous week, Bianca, Jakob and Thomas worked on measuring out and cutting piping holes for them. And you can see the automatic torch height controller on the plasma cutter continued working perfectly while cutting at a slope. And this time we set the cutting file right so all the holes turned out the size that we needed. All three remaining bulkheads were cut so going forward we'll start welding clamp fittings to them. And lastly, Martin turned up the lathe to finish two more joint bearings for the astronaut seat footrest which he and Daniel finished last week. Once the bearings were done, the whole seat frame could be assembled and Bianca gave it a first test set. At this point it is mostly held together by clamps and zip ties so it'll also enter the welding stage next time. And that is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit all-volunteer project. The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website, www.copsub.com, and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.